my name is Jennifer Hitchcock and I am an AP government teacher at Thomas Jefferson High School for Science and Technology in Alexandria, Virginia. And today I'm here to talk to you about the first FRQ that you will see on the exam, the content application. Today, we're gonna look at the 2022 exam, looking at Ralph Nader and third parties. So it's a great time for you to go ahead and grab paper and pencil for you to follow along and practice as we go through this FRQ sample. So like I said, the concept application FRQ is going to be the very first FRQ you'll run across in your AP exam. And you have 20 minutes to accomplish this task. Know that it's worth three points. There are three points across it. You have three um, verbs, task verbs that you have presented. And so there's specific material you have to accomplish for each of them. I would also recommend that as you're writing, you use active voice and just to reiterate or touch back to your English class, that's usually when you provide the subject like Congress and the verb like legislated as you are talking about whatever it is in response to the prompt. That allows for a very clear understanding of who is doing what, which is beneficial for all of your responses across this course. My other suggestion that I tell my students is to use proper nouns. If there's proper nouns in the scenario, this entire question turns on your ability to be able to interpret these new scenarios. So you should reach up there and pull down those proper nouns to show that you have mastery of the content in the course. Also remember that we have some verbs here that are going to direct you to do some content as well. And I like to go ahead and connect back to those before I get into the, in the context of the scenario. So remember, you always have that A point, we have to describe something, which means you should identify the actor or the noun, and you should show through description in that context, which especially when we see in the context of the scenario, where you see this material connecting to the prompt. And we'll see that when we go through our practice questions today. The B point is to is an explain. And so again, it's probably gonna say in the context of the scenario and you're gonna to want to include those proper nouns and that active voice. And when you give evidence showing where you see things, whether they be process oriented with an explain how or explain why, which has to do with, for, with reasoning as to why things are the way they are, you're going to wanna to make sure that you're pulling again from that stimulus with those proper nouns to see that connection between your understanding of the content and the stimulus. And we'll see the same thing in that C point as well in the context of the scenario. And then finally, this is a really important thing to remember that the scenario is going to be new to you. Probably will have never heard of the activity or the interaction, the actors maybe, but it's not really important that you know who they are. It's that you're able to see information and think about how that connects back to the concepts that you learned in this course. So this is a demonstration of, I understand the various components of the AP government class that are going to be new and novel in situations in the real world. And we're doing that because we wanna show that we can understand these concepts in our contemporary lives as we're reading the news or watching the news, whatever it might be. So here's a great opportunity for you to pause your video and to read the stimulus. Uh, this is an example of you know this from the 2022 exam. And then we're gonna turn and tackle the questions. So pause your video now and we'll come back around and give an answer in a second. Welcome back. I hope that you have a good mastery of whatever that content is. So our first question here is to describe a structural barrier in the scenario that makes it less likely a third party candidate will be able to secure enough popular support to justify including the candidate in a debate. Here's a, where you're going to pause the video again, look back at the content that we had with the stimulus and construct an answer. And I will show you an exemplar of what would earn points in a minute. All right, let's take a look at an example of an answer. This response would earn the point, and there's a couple of reasons why. 
So the first thing, cutting back around to the idea of our task verb describe, it's a step beyond identify. Identify means to name something. And here we do name something by saying the winner take all system. But if we just said the winner take all system, we wouldn't be describing. You have to show me that you see that winner take all inside the actual inside the actual stimulus. So let's read further ahead to figure out where that describe point was earned. And it's here. So we have our description of a winner take all. They give a definition. Every party elector wins uh, points, wins the most votes of the state. But we also need to be able to connect it back to where we see it in the stimulus. And so they're making this connection to Ralph Nader from the third part or from the Green Party would have difficulty winning because of the winner take all system. All right. So hopefully that helps. And um, that winning popular support because of the winner take all is a nice way of really making sure that we've described how the winner take all is that structural barrier to a third party candidate. Again, not enough to just say it, that it's the winner take all system, but we've got to like define it and then show where we see it in the stimulus. And that's how we accomplish that described task. Here's another example that wouldn't earn a point. So they're gonna start out by repeating the prompt and saying that it's a structural barrier makes it less likely a third party candidate would be able to secure enough popular support. I'm gonna move forward and their answer here is, portrayed in the media. This doesn't earn a point because there's a actually content disconnect here. So a structural barrier has to do with a process that's been established. We can think of that as a law or um, some kind of other process that can be formal, formalized in law or informal in just kind of like protocols that different people use. But the media is actually a linkage institution which is gonna connect us and convey our policy interests to the our elected officials. It's one of four. So this is a disconnect because it's more of a thing and not so much a process. And that's why this would not earn a point. Now, what I can say that um, also in addition to that, that is a little bit um, of a problem is that they don't actually specifically cite anything in the scenario. So there's two reasons why this wouldn't earn a point. Um, there's, you know, looking for those proper nouns. I don't see any discussion or reference to Ralph Nader or to the electoral system or to uh, debates. That's going to be problematic. And um, even just mentioning debates in and of itself isn't enough because debates are in the are in the prompt, and you have to show that you understand. Let's move on to our B point. Again, here's a great point for you to pause the video and to write your answer. All right, so we are back. And as we're going through this again, I'm gonna show you an example of where a point is earned and where a point is not earned. And you can grade your assignment as we go through this. So I do like the fact that they're repeating the prompt once again. That's one of those tricks that I share with my own students that helps them understand that sometimes when we read a question really quickly, we might misinterpret what that question is actually asking us. And we wanna answer that question. So by repeating that prompt, we're ensuring that we understand as we move forward to identifying what our answer is, describing it as evidence and explaining how that works. Here, that structural barrier of the winner take all that we reference in our A point is going to influence elections because of the two party system, right? So this, the influence that we see of a third party in the two party system is that our main parties, Democrats and Republicans, are oftentimes going to adopt our third party platform. And that's a very specific type of influence, right? We've identified it. Now we need to go on and describe it and show how this works. So our description is that the Green Party in the scenario, Nader's arguing a lot of positions which are taken off the table by Republicans and Democrats. I think that language is a little wishy-washy, but at least I have an understanding that the kid sees that there's a transition or a translation of Nader's platform into the Republican platform. And so even if that's not clear, 
we are going to come back around and say that the third parties influence this by adopting third party policies of the of, of their which the public supports and that is that connection of well this is how it works this is how we're seeing that change so again we're identifying the change we're describing it from the scenario and then we're showing how that is going to have an impact an example that's a non-example of an answer is they do a lovely job here. This, this response has a lovely job of coming back around to influencing public policy that um, we would see that candidates are maybe uninformed. But the biggest issue I see here once again is that there's no specific connection back to our policy. I would like to see Ralph Nader cited. I would like to see Green Party cited. Something where I know that the student is able to point into that stimulus and say, this here is where I see this connection. So they're also a little bit wrong on the content, which is, so it's, it's, it's a two, two strikes against them. So we're going to turn to our C point now, which is going to look at how third party candidates in the scenario have a positive impact on participatory democracy. And I'm going to give you a hint before you pause the video and say, think critically about positive impact. Go ahead and pause your video and we'll look at an exemplar in a second. All right, so grading along, right? We wanna show that positive impact. In this response, they say that a third party, the inclusion of a third party candidate, Ralph Nader, so already we see them connecting back to our stimulus, would have a positive impact on participatory democracy. I'm not even sure at this point that they've answered the question. They're just repeating it, just like say to themselves that they understand what the question is. In the second sentence, they move on to say that this is because this would show the individuals that the individual citizens that their interests are being accounted for and therefore they are actively participating in democracy, which would lead to greater political office efficacy and a positive impact in democracy overall. It's really here, which we're getting at people deciding to have a change in their behavior, right? Nader is doing something that is enabling individual citizens to be more likely to do something. And if we're talking about political efficacy, what that means is that they're more likely to vote, right? That's a vocabulary word that we have from the content. They're more likely to vote and that has a positive impact. You could describe political efficacy too if you couldn't pull that vocabulary word and still earn the points. Either way, you're showing that you can read that prompt, that you understand it's a positive impact, right? And you're showing how through connecting to the content in that stimulus of how that positive impact benefits democracy overall. All right, again, this is like showing individuals that their interests are being counted for. If you didn't, if you just had that response, that wouldn't be enough because we're not actually showing what the result of that positive feeling is, right? Like you have to turn the corner and say, they feel good about being a part of democracy and therefore they are more likely to actively participate in democracy. So it's resulting in some kind of tangible action and therefore a positive impact. So this is a great point and that is it. I mean, we went through this entire FRQ here. I hope that helps. Again, we went and we reviewed our, what our task verbs mean. We looked at an example from the 22 exam and looked for some good examples and some bad examples of how to accomplish the task before you in that CAFRQ. Good luck this year on your exams and we'll see you again really soon.